<laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but we've got ourselves a balance patch. It's uh, it's not a good day to be a Mirage main. It's not a good day to be a condition quickness untamed main. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, limited effectiveness on some of these changes here, but we have a variety of things happening. We've got a bunch of changes. This is a mini patch, by the way. This is not the major skills update. That's coming in March. It's confirmed here in this patch, middle of March here as well. This is just some, some little tweaks to kind of uh, deal with the patch that we had in the previous year at this point. We got some relic changes. We got some skill changes. We got some nerfs. We got some reworks, a variety of things. Let's go ahead and get into it. So first up, we got the relic stuff. We got Relic of Caracosa. This is whenever you blast, you get an AoE heal. This relic took everyone by storm. My goodness me. Insane. Pretty much everywhere. Like most healers swapped over to using this over Monk. Because it turns out you have a lot of short cooldown blast finishes. And oh boy, do you get some very ser serious healing output from this. And yeah, you'll notice this is PvE and World versus World. This is for a very good reason. Uh, in particular, Revenant had an incredible ability to get crazy healing with Mace 3 with this skill. And there's going to be another change on that later, actually, to further facilitate that not being as strong as it was. But anyway, a little bit of a nerf. It's hard to gauge how strong this is going to be, or, or like how much of a nerf this is going to be just by looking at the numbers, to be honest. Uh, but this will certainly bring it more in line with some of the other options here. Uh, as well, like in terms of like the healing stuff. It was definitely overperforming a lot. Kind of similarly with Relic of the Flock as well. Also a bit of a nerf to this Relic. The Relic heals instead of granting barrier. Excess healing is converted to barrier. So the same like value is coming out of it in a sense, but you're, a lot of the time you might end up getting less barrier, which in, in general is going to be worse, right? Like not a huge nerf or a mega nerf, but definitely a reduction in effectiveness. Because in general, you want to have barrier. Barrier is better than healing because mitigating damage is better than and kind of reactively healing it back up. And of course, you can heal people up underneath that barrier, right? Like, so it's in a way, this effect, this effect kind of competes with itself in a, in a way as well. So, a bit of a nerf. Uh, I, I think this actually is... It's not, not, it's not bad. And if you use it before you engage or if you use it when you're at full health and it can still be strong. So if you use it reactive, uh, sorry, you know, proactively when there's going to be a big damage coming in in PvE or on a push in World Burst or what, it will still be good. But you'll kind of get punished for it. Uh, it won't be quite as effective when you're kind of in the middle of a fight there as well. Relic of Resistance. This relic now triggers when using a heal skill instead of when using an elite skill. Reduce the resistance duration from 5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Reduce the cooldown from 30 seconds to 10 seconds. This looks very much to me like they want you to use this on Mesmer and Guardian in World versus world because of course risen's incredibly powerful when you're dealing uh with you know you don't want to get slowed down right when you're kind of pushing around and moving so you don't get caught out of position so a we risen is very very useful there especially when you're up to 100 percent boon duration that's still going to be a good chunk of resistance and on heal skill is way better again you've got guardian mantra you've got mesmer mantra now which is really really good for doing that i could imagine that seeing play uh, to be honest, because again, of how powerful resistance actually is in this world versus world context. Relic of the pack. This relic also grants might and fury to affected allies. So this gives might, fury, and super speed when you use an elite skill. This is kind of another one that's kind of a an interesting relic, and I, I kind of like where they're going with this. It will probably be similar to the old um, rune of the pack, right? So it will give maybe like three might and some fury in a 600 radius. Again, you the ability I think of here is immediately the Guardian Elite Mantra, get a stability stack, even a stun break, and you also slam some super speed at the same time. It didn't cut it um, on its own, and I'm not totally sure that it will now because adding Might and Fury, I don't think it actually makes it that much better because the really big sell there was the super speed. Anyway, Relic of Durability. This Relic now also gets Resolution. This is just like prop region and Resolution. Like on, like, bleh, who cares? Uh, Relic of the Weaver. This Relic no longer has an internal cooldown. This is when you use a Stance. You get a damage modifier, 10% damage for 4 seconds, I believe. So now you can kind of chain them together without this 8 second internal cooldown. Um, I think Relics like this really struggle because of how good some of the passive relics are most notably relic of fireworks right is a seven percent damage mod kind of semi-permanently um same with relic of the thief a five percent permanent damage mod basically so when you have a relic like this that's way gimmickier way more reliant on cooldown usage and 
probably doesn't have the same level of time. It's like, hmm, yeah, okay, why bother? Um, so that's kind of thing. It probably needs a better damage modifier. Maybe you could make it something like 12%, maybe. Uh, maybe they don't like doing weird numbers like that, but it probably has to be something like that, I feel like, for it to be good. Maybe I'm completely wrong and the nerds have already crunched that this is actually OP now, but I feel like effects like this are a bit too niche to really work when you have such generic effects. I think we've said this in a lot of the other reviews previously, but in general, I think relics should... The generic relic should kind of be cleansed and purged. They should add weirder ones. Like I think stuff like Caracosa is really exciting. Stuff like Caracosa, Flock, Resistance, Pack. That that's actually cool. I think stuff like Fireworks, Monk, and Thief. These are the relics that kind of gatekeep the other relics from being good and really hold them back a lot of the time. So yeah, anyway, that we we do that conversation every balance patch review. So we don't need to, we don't need to do it here. I guess I've already done it, but oh well, whatever. Relic of Dagda. The projectile fire by this relic now dazes enemies it strikes. Reduce the warm-up duration from 1.5 to 1 second. And then a bunch of the other relics also had their kind of warm-up time, which is in other words, you press the button, then it casts a spell. This is the time. The warm-up time is like, how long does it take to cast that spell? I actually didn't realize how long these were. It was two seconds. Of, it was two seconds? That is so trash. Uh, but now it's only one second on all of these. Wow. And Relic of Dagda dazes. I mean, having CC on an additional skill is kind of interesting, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't think it's... It may not be enough to make the cut. There's some pretty damn good relics out there right now in PvP, right? Like, PvP's got some pretty good stuff. It's difficult. It's quite a competitive market, as it were. But we'll see. I think stuff like Nightmare actually has some potential with some more usability. It's just, it's got strong stats on it, and the effect is good um, on it. So there's maybe something that can happen in, in some of these, like with the that stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Um, again, I think we'll see some more iteration on that over time. And now we get to the balance patch stuff. And oh, oh, guys, in the intro, I forgot to mention that, yep, Ellie is getting nerfed pretty hard, actually. And to be fair, it's not going to get demolished. But yeah, the Condi, uh, the Condi Ellie builds are getting nuked. I mean, they were doing very, very high DPS. Some pretty exciting stuff coming out of Tempest in particular, actually. Um, utilizing this hammer and Singeing Strike, the auto attack, Surging Flames, the two skill, and Ground Pound, the Earth five skill. Uh, getting nerfed pretty damn hard. Uh, burning duration three to 1.5 seconds in PvE. Surging Flames nine to three seconds here in PvE only. And the bleeding on Ground Pound 10 to six. Now, of course... Uh, Th these are all pretty significant nerfs, and the damage loss is going to be pretty high here, not going to lie. Um, at the end of the day, it probably doesn't matter that much. Like, Elementalist, fortunately, especially Tempest, has a lot of skills, right? You've got a whole bunch of buttons you can press. You rotate through all of them. Um, so this is going to be a little bit painful, I think, and I'm kind of surprised that they, they gave it a bit of a wallop there. I'm surprised they actually are super bothered about these builds doing high DPS. I suspect that... I'm not going to lie, and I kind of contextualize this entire balance patch here. I'm pretty sure a lot of these changes is like, oh, some of these numbers are a little bit too high. We're going to get rid of this. I think it's very easy to go, why are they specifically homing in on this right now? I think it's very much not like that. I think the way that Arena is approaching this is, oh, we're working on this big balance patch for mid-May. We can play with the numbers a little bit in between and give things a little bit of a jiggle to make sure stuff doesn't get too out of hand. I think that's kind of the approach they're going with here. Um, with the balance. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and of course they might adjust this and kind of like tweak this a little bit down the line there as well. But will these builds still be good? In my opinion, yep, they absolutely will. Uh, I think the Alacrity Tempest build in particular is really cool actually. There's some really fun shenanigans you can do with that as well uh, in some of the record runs I've been seeing pop up there as well. But yeah, that's uh, that's the deal with that. That's with Elemental. There's a little bit of a nerf there, guys. Okay, viable Ellie build detected. Nerfs erected. Engineer. Condition Holosmith and Power Scrapper are a bit both overtuned in PvE and are getting brought down in this update. We've also slightly reworked Bulwark Gyro to be more reliable for supporting allies. And Adaptive Armor has been reworked to be an effective Grandmaster trait for support builds to prepare for the introduction of the Schwab. <laughs> Look, you guys have better be reworking that, okay? Because this was, uh... Ooh. Ooh. uh <laughs> oh, no! So, Blowtorch. Fix an issue that causes the skill to inflict more burning than intended. So that's the nerf to Condi Engie. Apparently the skill was just bugged. Okay. We don't really know how much of a nerf this is. We don't know how much extra burning it was inflicting. I don't know. Maybe someone in the chat knows. It was probably like one extra stack or something like that. Um, Condi Hollow, definitely a strong build. Um, I think it's one of those builds that's kind of okay to be strong. It's, you know, it commits all of its buttons to doing damage pretty much. Uh, and, you know, 
I think that's that's fine. If it hits pretty hard, it definitely does do a lot of damage though, so fine. That's okay. Um, but then we have the Bullet Gyro. This skill no longer redirects damage from nearby allies to the user. It now grants barrier to nearby allies upon activation and on each pulse. This, the, I, I'm always kind of sad to see the, the damage leech gone. And this will actually kind of get rid of this really funny bug where you elixir S and you can actually uh, nuke your entire team while you're in Barot Gyro. So that's that's rip, I guess. But yeah, realistically, this is probably going to be real. Um, it depends on which barrier it is, obviously. But I can see this being really strong. This is a short cooldown ability. Bullet Gyro is a 20 second cooldown. You want this on your heal scrapper builds uh because you know you want it for the stability anyway and now you're going to have this big aoe barrier on a very short cooldown as well which is 20 seconds 16 with alacrity that's going to be really good like anything any effect that says 16 second cooldown big aoe barrier that's going to be good uh especially seeing as they actually added additional barrier to scrapper as well you've got mace now you've got the um uh, the adapt traits as well going on there. There's, there's some good barrier access on this build, and that seems to be the identity that's being carved out for Scrapper there as well. I do still think that Scrapper's boon access is pretty mediocre a lot of the time, and it's a quickness healer as well, uh, a quickness support build, which is a bit awkward with the way the meta works out because of Herald pretty much. Uh, but there's I, I like where they're going with this. I, I like the idea of um, making some supports have like some really solid barrier access in a way to kind of compete with Scourge in a sense, particularly seeing as Scourge is an alacrity barrier Barrier and a scrap is a quickness barrier. I think that's that's a good juxtaposition to have in in the um, the game's design. So this is probably going to end up probably being pretty good um, overall. Again, we'll see the numbers. And when it comes to like the damage mitigation, I think having that damage mitigation was good. But of course, you could also kind of end yourself, right? And if there was loads of damage going out, the scrap would end up dying, which is certainly not ideal uh, overall. That's not ideal to say the least. I think it'll be interesting to see how this actually performs um, in in World versus World 2. Because some of these changes, I think in particular this one for Adaptive Armor, and definitely some of the stuff for Mesmer, uh, they were definitely thinking about World versus World and trying to address some of the, the issues that is in that game mode as well. Uh, because, of course, uh, this barrier will be really nice for pushes in World versus World. But it, again, like having that Bulwark Gyro to absorb that damage can also potentially be pretty damn useful as well. Um, so we'll see how this one actually works out. Adaptive Armor. This trait has been reworked. Your Function Gyro has two ammo charges. Cool. And grants barrier to allies when cast. Function Gyro no longer has an increased recharge when creating additional gyros, but has a higher base recharge. So in other words, if you revive or stomp a bunch of allies, no more increased recharge, but the overall cooldown is higher, but you have ammo. This sounds like a really cool trait. I love traits that kind of change up functionality. This really, really does. And you also give barrier um, AoE as well simultaneously. Going to be some synergy with your Bulwark Gyro. It's kind of a multi-use skill. We already know that it can give stability. It can give barrier from an adder trait that will presumably stack with this. Could be really powerful, actually. Again, we need to see the numbers. And I imagine they won't go too crazy on this in PvP and World versus World for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, this is cool. This kind of turns your gyro into an AoE res, right? Like comparable to something like War Banner, kind of. Illusion of Life, kind of. Um, or an AoE Stomp too, right? Like For the same reason. It actually seems like a really fun skill. Uh, again, it's going to be a PvP and World versus World thing because obviously in PvE, this is competing with your quickness trait. Um, so a little bit, a little bit difficult, uh, you know. Uh, to to take this right. Um, wait, I'm actually just checking. Wait, is it in? Is it Grandmaster? It is Grandmaster. Yes, it is. Yes, I I I, I somehow managed to gaslight myself into thinking. Wait, did they move it to Master? Did it did it get moved down a tier? But no, I just checked on the wiki and <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a Grandmaster trade. Okay, where I'm not completely insane. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty big one, and I think that we'll definitely see some play in these competitive modes in particular. Uh, again, in World vs. World, can definitely be a little bit, you know, your gyros just get deleted sometimes, but if you can actually manage to pull this off, like, get a good stomp going, like, even finish off two, uh, kind of, enemies that get caught off to the side, or you manage to get some bigger revise, or you can use it to AoE res when people are down, like, on the zerg so your gyros won't get cleaved as much, that can be a really powerful effect, I think. And then, power scrap a nerf, applied force, reduce the power bonus from might sack, per might sack from 35 to 30 in PvE only. Yeah, this is busted, um, so it's being toned down a little bit. Not a huge surprise to me. Uh, this this build is absolutely insane right now. It's still going to be absolutely insane next patch. Uh, so, yeah, not much to say about that. It's a, a well-deserved nerfed, absolutely uh, busted build. There it is. Nice. Okay. Guardian. Ah, uh, This is, honestly, this is probably the only line 
that I think most Guardian mains are going to be excited and interested in. But let's go ahead and read the preamble here as well. Support Firebrand still isn't quite at the level we'd like to see in PvP, so we made a few more improvements to it in this update. We've also reworked the Radiant Fire trait to be less dependent on always having a torch equipped to make room for condition builds to swap between offhand torches and pistols. And here we go! Here's the big one! That's the Radiant Fire change for torch. This trait no longer grants Zealot's Flame when critically striking an enemy. It instead grants an additional ammunition to Zealot's Flame. This trait also causes Zealot's Flame to inflict additional burning to enemies in PvE only. So they did that, so the damage kind of works out the same. But now you don't have to do that thing where you have to always have a torch offhand because you're going to get a critical strike which will then proc your Zealot's Flame and will then, you know, then you have to fire it out and it goes away after a certain amount of time, basically. Um, yep. Definitely an improvement to playability. I'm not going to lie, I do kind of like proc playstyles where you're like, oh yeah, like I've got a proc, I've got to use that proc now. Uh, I think that is kind of cool. And that's not a new thing, by the way. People are going to say, that's just because you're playing WoW now, Tipo. Actually, no, I do kind of like stuff like that, like some kind of dynamic gameplay to the rotation. I think that can make it really fun. But I think definitely with weapon swapping, it does make it restrictive. Especially seeing as, you know, Arena want us to be enjoying Torch on our Conditioned Guardians. It definitely makes sense to have a change like this. I think a lot of Guardian mains in general are really going to enjoy this and definitely a big improvement to the playability of a variety of Guardian builds for sure. Then let's have a look at this Firebrand stuff. Um, Mantra of Solace, healing Mantra cooldown is going down to 24 seconds in PvP. So, you know, you can burn through your charges and then recharge it uh, much quicker for some sustain. And Mantra of Liberation, ammo charge goes from 45 seconds to 35 seconds um, in PvP only. Azure Sun, this is the third skill in the healing tome. This skill will also heal affected allies. Cooldown goes up. Uh, Igniting Burst is a blast finisher now. That's the second skill in the first tome. Reduce the casting time down as well. And... Uh, Shining River, this is the fourth skill in the healing tome. Cast time goes down as well. So I think these changes are... are all these changes here are really nice buffs. This also applies in PvE, by the way. So now uh, Heal Firebrand's getting buffed too. So your as your son, your Vigor ability with some regen on it and stuff, that's also going to heal. Uh, Igniting Burst is going to be a blast finisher. That's more might generation for your fire field blasting and more value from Karakosa Relic if you choose to run that. Shining River, just cast time's going down is always nice as well. That's good stuff. Um, for PvP, though, I mean, I'm not sure if I see it. Um, I, I don't know if I see this, to be honest, gamers. Um, the problem with uh, Firebrand in, in kind of its new form is that supports in the current meta, the team fight supports, they have to be very, very tanky. Um, like... Core Guardian has the Valor trait line for some amazing sustain. Core Virtues in general are very sustain oriented. You can live really well with them, uh, especially when you have Renewed Focus 2. You don't have any cast times on it as well. You can just like spam out heals and boons and cleanses and stuff like that. Tempest, again, has a bit more hard casting, but you have a lot of really good defensive options and really good survivability options on your Tempest. Firebrand has to give up that third core trait line, which in this case actually sucks because you give up a huge amount of your sustain um, to play this. I feel like you're just going to get crushed to be honest in a team fight and i think there's a little bit of a um hint at what arena net want here um so if we look at merciful intervention the cooldown's going down uh, the radius is going up uh in pvp and world versus world so i think they want to shift firebrand to be more of a almost like a roaming oriented support rather than a team fight oriented support which I think is interesting, kind of reminiscent of Spellbreaker, or indeed the original incarnation of Firebrand. For those who don't remember, um, in the original Firebrand build, you would actually run Judge's Intervention, Merciful Intervention, and Sword Main Hand. You would like zip around the map all over the place uh, and be hyper mobile actually on this on this Guardian build to be where you need to be. This is kind of to keep up with Heralds as well, like you were going crazy with, with unnerfed Heralds, so Herald was like ridiculously fast. And there was Thief in the meta as well. So you kind of needed the, the mobility on Firebrand to keep up. But it was very skirmishy. And I think maybe they want to try and bring that back. And that would also be a good contrast to the current state of supports. Current supports in Guild Wars 2 PvP. It's very teamfight oriented. Um, very I heal, I boon, right? I don't really do a lot of damage, right? Like a bit of CC here and there. Um, is kind of how it works. I think they want a slightly more aggressive support. We saw that with giving the Might on Firebrand on Ashes of the Just now. They're giving a Blast Finish now on um, uh, the Igniting Burst, right? All that kind of stuff. Uh, I think what could be really cool is if we do... I don't know how they would do this. It would be weird, right? Like, you kind of need, like, a 
You, or maybe you need like Mender's amulet to come back in some way so it can do a bit of power damage. Because I'm not sure if you'd really want to run Axe on a setup like this. Because that would be like the Sage Brand build coming back. But that doesn't really work. Because then you've got no sword. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's weird. I, I think it would be really interesting to see a more almost like 2v2 skirmish oriented support come into the metagame. And that kind of looks like what they want to do. Yeah, the chat's right about this. Yeah, Spectre is that, right? Yeah, Spectre kind of is this. It's one of the reasons why it's so good in PvP right now is that it roams around the map going crazy and it can also, blam, give you a really big heal uh, coming out of stealth when it roams to plus one you. It's like it, it, it plus ones your enemy and it heals you at the same time. Really powerful thing about Spectre in PvP. And I think that's kind of maybe where they want to go with this. Similar with the Spellbreaker again. Because when Spellbreaker was when his heyday, when it was really good as support Spellbreaker, it's exactly what it did. It was running around with sword main hand going crazy crazy, right? Um, like it was CCing with Hammer sometimes, like some players were playing Hammer. Uh, it was CCing with Dagger, it was ripping Boons, right? Like all this, it even had Stomp access, right? All this kind of good stuff. Much more aggressive support, which I think actually does suit Guild Wars 2 PvP quite nicely. It would be, it would be, be nice to have that type of playstyle back, I think, because, you know, team fights are far and all, but, you know, sometimes you don't want to just like smash into each other all day, right? But overall, some pretty cool stuff, and hey, nice bonuses uh, for PvE too, which is important because I think Heal Firebrand actually is one of the weaker healers right now. Um, it's kind of crazy, right, to, to think about that. Imagine saying that, but yeah, Heal Firebrand has kind of got out power crept by the rest of the game, so it actually kind of does need a bit of help um, if the other healers are not going to get nerfed to kind of compete with what currently exists in the game. Uh, and then the final change for Guardian is Soaring Devastation. The movement speed granted by this trait is no longer removed when Wings of Resolve is on cooldown, so this trait, this trait is just going to be a straight up 25% movement speed increase um as well um okay I, I feel like this is aimed at pvp um for some mobility for dragon hunter uh it's a bit tricky because it competes with the aegis trap trait which is you know pretty good for not dying obviously and dh kind of in a weird spot in pvp to be honest no trap or rune there's other options out there as well. Oh, no. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're going with this. So you can be a little bit faster and run around all over the place because DH is a bit slow a lot of the time. But who the hell knows? Um, you know, I don't know. Like, it, it's, it's something. And there's also a bug fix on Reversal of Fortune. Nice. Uh, I mean, actually, that seems kind of relevant. Fix an issue that prevented the skill from healing while in the air. Fix an issue that prevented the skill from triggering on heal effects. Oh, I guess that actually is pretty important, to be honest. That's a, that's a pretty serious bug. Nice. Ah, uh, <laughs> dude. Honestly, I love reading patch notes like this because I know that there's going to be a lot of YouTube comments about this. I'm thinking about the Reddit thread where people are probably frothing at the mouth over stuff like this because, goodness me, ain't it getting a little bit brutal here? Ain't it bringing out the hammer? Um, condition mirage is. Getting out of hand, guys, okay? You know, at least three people were playing that at this point, uh, and it's out of control. We're going to have to fix that. It's getting toned down after it landed too high with the changes in the November update. The November update also pushed Mesmer support builds a bit over the top in World vs. World, and we're starting with some reductions to its alacrity and quickness access. We'll be keeping a close eye on the effectiveness of these builds once the rifle is available, and we'll make additional adjustments as needed to bring them in line with other support builds. Supported mantras are also getting a minor usability improvements to prepare for the release of a rifle. Fair enough. Enough. Okay, so let's see what that actually means. Okay. Lingering thoughts, Axe 2. Reduced number of whirl finishes from 4 to 2. That is significant, because bear in mind, Mesmer loves to be whirling in fields to generate addition, additional condition damage. Lacerating chop. Um, this is the auto attack. Reduce the clone durations from 3 to 1 second in PvE. Oh my god, that's so... <laughs> Imaginary axes. Reduce the clone torment duration from 4 to 3 seconds in PvE only. So, what does that mean? It means a 6k DPS nerf is what the nerds have found out approximately. So, from 46k down to 40k um, in PvE or something around that. So, it's a pretty brutal nerf, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I think it's probably a little, it's a little harsh to be honest. Um, it's definitely a little harsh, especially because this build is kind of weird, right? Like, it's not good in certain encounters. It's got a lot of force movement on it. Um, you know, it, it's one of those builds that is just a pumper build. It's just there to blast, pretty much. It is Mesmer, so technically speaking, you get some utility in there. But it's also like a melee build at the same time. It's a weird build, right? Like, it's a build that probably should be on the higher end uh, when it comes to damage out, but it's also conditions as well, right? So, yeah, it, you know, it, yeah. So it's got that going for it as well. But I mean, 
Yeah. Oof. Ouch. You know, uh, get wrecked, uh, I guess. Uh, it's back to Virtuoso for all the Mesmer mains there. And again, I, I think that, you know, it is worth noting, like, uh, again, this is just like a little patch that they were just trying to mess around with and get some numbers going. I shouldn't say mess around with because, of course, they, they definitely thought about this stuff. Uh, they had some numbers in mind with these, and, and maybe this is a little bit on the lower end. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I also do want to say, by the way, that a build having a low play rate is not a reason not to nerf it, to be clear. Because there's a load of reasons why a build might not have a high play rate. Um, it might be uh, a very difficult build to play. It might be a very niche build, very gimmicky build, right? It might be a build that people just don't like, right? For example, not a lot of people like NG, just straight up, right? People don't like playing Engineer. Uh, Mesmer is also pretty unpopular. Thief is relatively unpopular, right? I think Rev is even, like, the least popular profession, right? But that's not a reason to buff it, right? Because Rev is fucking insane right now. Uh, for example. So don't fall into that mindset. We should all, when we, when we start thinking about balance, we should always be thinking about what, is this build actually too strong? Is it too strong? Does it need to be buffed? Does it need to be nerfed? And I think more importantly, what can really affect play rates is actually usability. Is like, people don't, stuff like forced movement is, I think, quite frustrating for players to deal with, and that's going to massively drop down play rates, right? Like with animation locks and stuff like that, which definitely is pretty abundant in a build like Mirage. Uh, and kind of looking at some stuff like that is probably the way you can improve play rates rather than messing around with numbers. Because you saw that, right? Like, even when Mirage was absolutely broken, play rate, honestly, pretty low, right? And this is true with sort of, like, Untamed too, right? Like, when Untamed has been, like, giga busted, people don't play it because it's, like, really, you know, kind of cumbersome to actually play. So keep that in mind. Do not make the, oh, it had a low play rate, so why nerf it? This is a terrible argument. We should be talking about, was this a little bit too much? Does this build need to be improved? Do we need to improve the play rate? of this build so that players enjoy playing it more and more people want to go ahead and get into it right is virtue and i think you know do you know what mirage's worst enemy is it's virtuoso virtuoso is mega easy mega busto uh, and it's fully ranged and it's kind of the same role as mirage kind of a little bit maybe right and that is actually an issue like you need to make sure that these two builds are very well differentiated in terms of their actual function so that players will be drawn to each of them in different situations because Mirage has had times when it has been pretty popular, right? It, where uh, When it's been you know, really, really strong, but that's because it had this really powerful confusion gimmick. I'm not saying we should bring that back because that is in itself was a balanced nightmare. I think finding a healthier version of Mirage having its own thing that it can bring to the table is probably a better idea than having it being like absolutely broken on confusion fights and just very very mediocre everywhere else because if it was even remotely good it would just be beyond broken in confusion fights and it was actually it was beyond broken let's be honest but anyway I digress. Let's continue. So the Mantra stuff. Mantra of Pain. Radius, 240 and 360. Don't need a target. That's really nice for heal chrono builds in particular. Uh, and I guess you can still just spam it, I guess, to get rid of the charges if you want to clear it and rechannel it to get your might back. So a bit of a usability thing there as well. Uh, Mantra of Recovery. Radius, 240, 360. This is actually really nice on this one because that's the AoE heal channel uh, thingy that you can do on Mantra of Recovery. So whenever you rechannel it, you get a big AoE heal. That radius is 360. Mantra of Resolve, similar. Radius goes up to 240, 360. Again, the Mega Cleanse when you rechannel it. And of course, the AoE... Oh, it's just actually the rechannel. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghost Swarm Power Cleanse is already 360. And it is! Uh, it's just the rechannel is going to 360. Really nice. That's like a full... It's like a it's full cleanse on yourself and a three AoE cleanse on you, uh, or the, on your allies rather, and Mantra Distraction no longer requires a target. So in other words, what this is letting you do is if you want to dump it and rechannel it, you can do that. Because this is um, particularly notable with Mesmer Mantras, because Mesmer Mantras have a longer count recharge than their base recharge. So if you if you want to kind of accelerate your count recovery, you can dump them and rechannel, yeah? Instead of having to wait 24 seconds for one charge, 24 seconds for another, you can go boom, boom, or if you've got one left over, right, just dump the charge and then rechannel without necessarily having a target. So that's where the usability comes from. It's actually, uh, a, you will notice this, especially if you play this in PvP, I think, um, any kind of meso build in competitive modes with PvP, and honestly in PvE as well, I think you'll notice this in some situations too, but that's where the usability comes from. Uh, and these, these two changes in particular also kind of nifty for support chrono amounts of builds as well uh, in PvE. And we actually have some... Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Mirage, 
<laughs> Mirage. <laughs> so illusionary membrane and chaotic resistance. We got two more Condi Mesmer nerfs for PVE. Illusionary membrane reduced the condition damage bonus from 10% to 7% in PVE only. So this is whenever you have Chaos Aura, you get more damage, and this is expertise while you have regeneration. It's character persistence. You know, you know what's weird about this is that, dude, <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess they're kind of nerfing, uh, you know, Chaos Vert with this. Um, but also, man, poor old um, Staff Alak Mirage getting caught in the crossfire here. Oh, man. Like, th that build is, I think it's actually kind of cool because it gives all the chaos boons now. But honestly, I guess it's just not good enough in the current metagame where boons are all over the place. But goodness me. Little bit of a nerf there to poor old Condi Alak Mirage. I, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, ain't any to figure out what they want to do with that build. Like, it, it's really difficult. And, and this is definitely a problem. Um, with balance, where it's it's somewhat difficult to nerf one build without changing the other. Um, well, it's not exactly hard. I wouldn't say it's exactly difficult. It's just it requires a lot more changes, right? And, and this is definitely that you know I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but there's just so many things that need to be changed about the game. Like it's really hard for Anet to write enough patch notes, right? Like with these with these updates to actually get anything done. It's it's rough. I, I understand their, their plight, but yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, look, you know. Just don't play Staff Mirage, guys. <laughs> nice. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. We have restorative mantras. This is kind of, you know, it's actually so funny. This ability flip flop like five times. It used to work. It used to work like it works now. Whenever you channel, you get a heal around it. Then they they change it to whenever you use a charge, it heals around it. Then they change it back. And now we've gone back again. Um, so now whenever you use an, a, a mantra charge on Mesmer, you get the AOE heal as opposed to when you channel it. Uh, I think this is a really big usability increase. Uh, you'll notice the nerf here, but think about this, right? You get two ammo charges and they halved it. So in other words, it's basically the same. And in some ways, it's actually better to have granular healing, because if you have two heals that are the same as a big one, it, um, it won't overheal as much, right? It will overflow to potentially another subgroup a little bit better. Um, if you have two packets instead of just the one packet as well. So overall, this probably is a pretty significant usability increase, I think, it's because it means you can dynamically use the healing as opposed to having to kind of precast it or channel the healing. You can just like, boom, boom. You can use it whenever you want. Probably ends up a little bit better, um, in my opinion, um, in terms of the usability. This is for a heal chrono in PvE in particular is what is going on here. And there it is. Um, so yeah, little, little heal chrono memes there. And then we've got the world versus world stuff. So split second, this is the F1, right? Uh, on Chronomancer, cooldown goes up. Um, this is, they're changing this for a number of reasons, right? Like they want to um, reduce the boon duration, right? As we see here, improved alacrity is going down. Alacrity recharge, 50% to 35% in world versus world only. Flow of time and seize the moment, less alacrity per shatter and less quickness per shatter and of course you're getting less shatters overall so just like lower boon up time basically is their goal here um i think what's actually quite interesting is also the fact that chrono is a fascinating build or, or profession in world versus world because it is incredibly versatile what it can do because of course you have the support build that they're trying to target here but i think a lot of these changes are also going to affect the more aggressive chrono monster builds at the same time because they're using essentially the same technology right a lot of the same tech is being utilized here. Uh, notably split second, right? Because split second is really amazing on Chrono because you can use it to AoE boon rip, right? Using the domination trait line. And we also see escape artist getting nerfed here as well, which says reduce the distortion duration from five seconds to 1.5 seconds in world versus world only. Now, this is kind of an interesting change because um, I, I, their goal with this was a very world versus world oriented. They wanted to make sure that Mesmers would be able to get their phantasms off right because of course if you're in a big world versus world zerg you use a phantasm it's going to get evaporated right like all your clones are dead everything is going to get completely nuked um in that regard um so yeah and now they've kind of gone back on it's still 1.5 seconds i think that means phantasms are i think most of them can probably get their attacks off um 
during that duration, I think, anyway. Or at least it will help them get some of the attack off a little bit. So the trait still has its potency, but that definitely is a significant nerf, right? Like, um, five seconds is going to reintroduce some counterplay to those phantasms, potentially, um, that I guess otherwise wouldn't have been there. So I think they were just concerned with this being a little bit unhealthy. That the idea that phantasms in some way didn't have this element of counterplay that was kind of there. Although, honestly, phantasms... <laughs> Didn't really, don't really have this anymore because they just despawn after they do their attack. Like how many, how many times would you go like, ah yes, I'm going to focus down the phantasmal berserker, right? Um, in this situation, so I guess this is like very targeted at making them slightly less guaranteed to go off in world versus world, which I guess kind of suggests to me that's kind of more of a change. Looking at some of the the builds that do damage, honestly, who the hell knows. Uh, I haven't played World vs. World for too long. Who knows? Speaking of World vs. World... <laughs> Scourge! It's always, the it's always the same faces, isn't it, guys? Necromancer is currently in a pretty good spot in PvE. We considered some improvements for Power Harbinger builds, but wanted to see where build lands with the introduction of swords. I feel like even sword can't save that. Maybe they mega buff swords, who knows? I feel like it's going to affect Reaper more. Transfusion is a trait that overperforms in support Scourge builds in World vs. World. So we're making a change similar to what we do with Path of Corruption, in which the trait will increase the cordon of its related Scourge skill in World vs. World only. Like, you know, when you read that, you go like, oh, how much is it going to increase it by? Is it going to be like 10 seconds extra? 20 seconds extra? No! The cooldown is now increased to 60 seconds in World vs. World only. <laughs> oh, I honestly love reading change like this. It's so funny. It's like, they they want you to not play this. Uh, CMC is saying, uh, do not play this. Uh, you're not allowed. This is an illegal move. We are banning it without actually just completely removing it from the game. Um... So, yeah, this is obviously a mega nerf. Now, you know, maybe I'm on, like, mega copium here, or, or, or I'm just, like, insane. But, you know, the effect of transfusion is so strong. There's, there's almost, like, a reality where I could see this still seeing play. It's probably a little bit too long, um, considering that, you know, you're also losing healing with this as well. Bear in mind, like, Scourge and just Necro and World in general is multifaceted, right? Like, you're still corrupting boons. You're still cleansing a lot of condies. You're applying a lot of barrier. Um, to your team in World vs. World. Like, the res was pretty insane on that short cooldown. Uh, it's, you know, a little bit longer in World vs. World than PvE, obviously. It's still a pretty short cooldown. Uh, now it's going to be a lot longer. Like, it's still a surprisingly good effect, actually. But I, I think with some tuning, I think there's maybe some way where this could actually be relatively healthy. And, and I think this maybe gives some insight into how it could be changed in PvE, too. If some of the healing was moved off it onto some other Necromancer abilities. Just having, like, a really long cooldown. On transfusion, I think it'd really bring it in line with other revive skills, like more akin to stuff like search and rescue, like signet and so on. But yeah, 60 seconds probably does give it a bit of a bonk um, overall. But, you know, if it was more like 40 seconds or 35 seconds, uh, you know, there's, I, I, you know I, I have a little bit of confidence. There's maybe a happy medium where it could actually maybe not be mega oppressive um, and also uh, actually be pretty good. Um, at the same time, um, but you know, not not out of whack compared to other support builds. Maybe reducing the target cap could also be good, so it could like only pull three people. Maybe it heals five people, but it only pulls three people or something like that. That also could be kind of an interesting change to experiment with in PVE at the same time, actually, because like a really big problem with transfusion in PVE is that you can just like res five people every ten seconds, which is just inherently broken. It's, it's like an inherently broken thing to be able to do in in Guild Wars Two with a down state. But there it is, the one, one lonesome change for Scourge. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, just don't play that. Quote, CMC. Ranger, I love this. This line is so good. Like, I honestly feel like the devs are trolling sometimes when they say stuff like this. Condition-based quickness untamed is another build that's overperforming in terms of damage. And it's getting a few adjustments to bring it more online. And I love this because I guarantee you most of the people reading this probably weren't even aware that this was a thing. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know this was a thing. Until like the, the, the Condi Untamed Quickness mains appeared in my chat, right? Like, who plays this? You know, you've got to give the devs credit. Uh, you know who plays? I bet Trig plays this. He loves this stuff, right? The devs have got some credit. They have some very high build knowledge. They know about all of the esoteric, <laughs> the <laughs> esoteric obscure builds that the community comes up with. We love to see that. Quickness Untamed builds can struggle with might generation for their allies. So we've added might to the Littlose trigger in PvE to improve this. 
great sword is also getting a handful of tune-ups with the goal of making it a more competitive option for power builds. Actually, love to see that. Uh, great sword's a cool weapon on Ranger, and the damages are going up significantly. Actually, slice, enduring swing, um, damage. This is just the auto attack, of course, right? Like uh, you know, basic melee attack. Wow, a basic melee attack, insane. Maul damage goes up. Swoop damage is going up. Counter attack kick damage is going up. Hilt bash is going up as well. You know, it does slightly bother me that. Why are we doing this? Why are we making forced movement skills, um, defensive skills? I, I mean, counterattack doing damage is okay, right? Because, you know, you block and then bam, you can wallop them. I think something like that's kind of cool. A bit like the rev block, I guess, and it's full counter in a way. So I can allow that. But it, it does annoy me that ArenaNet keep doing this thing where they're like, okay, we have to make literally every single skill on your bar a DPS increase. I think this leads to some kind of scuffed gameplay right like I, I think i've been thinking about this a little bit over the last couple of weeks you know i've got some new perspectives in my life i think it really does make the game pretty unintuitive right um overall you know like it, it's it's an unintuitive idea that oh i should be pressing literally all of my buttons on cooldown um i, I think that leads to a lot of difficulties with like with like new players learning the game especially seeing as it does like increase like the memory requirement to play the game in a sense like you know like to memorize the the, the long thing of meme but whatever uh i do like to see it making being made better though i think great is a cool weapon and yeah that is a good point why is swooping like a bird less damage than a bear like more this should be like a 10.0 coefficient like a bear hitting you my goodness that's insane that's a huge dps there uh on that one but yeah that's cool i like that um and barrage increase the ammo count from one to two and one of us as well this is cool you know um i'm not really sure what they want to do with this uh to be honest i don't think you're going to be running this in zergs for the dps but hey you're even better at killing arrow carts now with, to help out that zerg and you can like shoot people behind the walls it's gonna be a decent chunk of damage there right like you know barrage already hits pretty hard now it's gonna hit harder a little random change in there uh we love to see that very nice that's you know that's content there we go and here's the condi uh condi untamed quickness stuff getting in here as well so uh devourer power coefficient goes down from 0.25 to 0.15 in pve only my understanding was that basically every like a lot of builds were using this devourer because it was like pumping really hard so i guess bringing it in line with other pets in terms of its regular dps the poison cloud from the carrion devourer cooldown goes up from 20 to 30 seconds in pv only again just nerfing down the condition damage on your condition quickness uh, untamed very nice sundering void this is the axe ambush attack bleeding sacks going down from three to two significant nerf actually i mean there man i actually the thing is i'm gonna admit my ignorance i have no idea how good this build is but i mean they're nerfing it pretty hard so i mean i guess it must be insane what could i say uh <laughs> <laughs> and let loose this trait now grants five sacks of mites for 10 seconds in addition to its previous effects in pve only so if you've got a bit of boon duration this is going to be a decent chunk of might let loose is going to activate whenever you get uh your ambush off and whenever you swap weapons um so decent amount of might generation i do like to see might getting slapped onto builds like this because in general one of the really big kind of gatekeepers of if a build is going to make sense in the raid comp is can it actually apply a good chunk of might one there is why herald is so beloved right is because it is capable of doing that completely trivially in a huge radius so any build that can't do that is going to go well you know i wish i was herald especially a quickness build so this is a good step in the right direction it's probably <laughs> I feel like it's not actually enough, to be honest, given how strong its competition is um, in the game. But I guess maybe it can trade off having like really high damage, apparently, right? Uh, for that. Although, I guess we'll see how much it ends up uh, getting nerfed as well. But there you go. Uh, you know, enjoy. That's uh, that's what we love to see. Qui uh, unless Quick Dome does 40k, it's no one in replacing Pug Heralds. That's definitely true. But yeah, there you go. that's it for Ranger. Uh, big fan, you know. all. Look, dude, I've uncovered the message here. You know all those posts on the subreddit saying, I wish I could longbow camp at 1500? This is Anet saying to us, we don't want you to do that. We want you to go in melee. We want you to get your greatsword out and, and whack stuff with it. Be a ranger and whack stuff with a greatsword like Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. Right? He's a ranger. You can be him too. Hilt bash stuff, maul stuff. Let's go. Do not be a longbow camping barebow ranger. That's what uh, ArenaNet want. Very good. <laughs> Revenant. In addition to toning down the damage of Power Vindicator in PvE, we've made some minor adjustments to Axe to improve its usability for condition builds. Frigid Blitz. 
No longer inflicts slow. The skill now also inflicts torment. Temporal rift. Reduce the time that it strikes from 0.9 to 0.75. Echoing eruption. And this is the one we talked about earlier with the Caracosa relic. Particularly for world versus world, I think. But probably everywhere as well. Just to keep it in check, I guess. Uh, reduce the number of blast damage from 3 to 1. This skill now also grants might to the user. So we'll do this one first. Uh, I think this is primarily thinking about world versus world. Uh, because this build with Heal Vindi was absolutely cranking. Uh, in terms of its healing output with that synergy with Relic of Caracosa, which again is a heal whenever you get a Blast Finisher. So, yeah, you only get one of them now. Uh, you know, maybe they could have tried two, um, actually, because I think it was kind of cool that this one skill, if you lined it up correctly, you could generate two finishes out of it. But I understand that they wanted to be maybe a little bit more aggressive just to, to really kind of bring it in check there as well. And you get some Might on yourself as well, always, no matter what field you blast. So no matter what field you blast, it's always going to be Might, which is actually relevant for PvP. Some of these changes definitely come into play in PvP too. Like this skill, it's going to be easy to land your Temporal Rift. Frigid Blitz, I almost feel like it's kind of a nerf in PvP. Um, it's a buff nerf, right, as always. Um, but you get Torment, so in PvE, I mean, I really hope you don't use this rotationally. Like, if, if you have to use this rotationally right now, I would, I would not be happy if I was a rev main. So for context, what this skill does is you hit something with it, you throw out a little axe, and then you teleport behind it, you know, anime weeaboo style, and then bash him with the axe. If you had to use that rotationally, you're not having fun. You're going to be miserable. You're going to cry. Uh, not good. Uh, so hopefully it's not enough torment to make it use rotationally. And it's a nerf in PvP, I think. Because again, like having that chill and slow really powerful on this. Like chill and slow were amazing in PvP, obviously. Being able to kind of like shut down people and prevent them from fighting back against you and chasing them down and, and making them easy to interrupt in CC is always really good. Slow, really powerful condi in PvP. So I feel like this is not that good for pvp or a nerf for pvp because again you get more damage from this which is nice but conley held kind of slaps in pvp right like it's one of those builds that has damage it will grind you down right like if you're in a team fight with a conley herald it will kill you um eventually um if you get hit by its attacks it's going to destroy you uh, i guess it does get you know even more damage from getting free might now and echoing eruption we'll see how much might it is of course but yeah, and a bit of a nerf to Power of Indy in PvE. Nothing wrong with this. Power of Indy, really good build. Uh, I'll tell you a secret. It's going to be really good after this as well. I, oh, how, who could have seen this one coming? Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's it for uh, for Rev. There we go. Boom. Enjoy. Thief. <laughs> Deadeye has been growing in popularity in PvP over the last few months. And we've seen that that's actually not a good thing. And we have come to cleanse it from your PvP matches. It can be a bit too difficult to lock down for the damage it's capable of dealing. We're increasing the initiative cost of Death's Advance to require a larger resource investment for the survivability that it provides. So Skirmisher Shot is going down in damage a little bit. Um, 0.8 to 0.7 in PvP only. And Death's Advance. This is the kneeling um, 4 skill that teleports you forward and stealths you. Uh, going up from 2 to 4 in PvP only. I mean, this is definitely a significant nerf, obviously. Like, this is a pretty big increase in initiative cost. But bear in mind, Thief still has loads of tools to disengage. I don't think this is the end of the world for this build. I don't think Deadeye mains are going to be, like, you know, crying and begging for mercy. Of course, if you want to use the skill now, it's going to be more of an investment. But you're still playing Thief. You have Shadow Sep. You have the ability to stealth, right? You have Shadow Portal as well. You're using the Shadow Watch trait line um, most of the time on this build. So you're still going to be very, very slippery. I don't think this is the end of the world. Um, and I don't, I, think, I don't think they wanted to, to delete Deadeye. They wanted to make sure that there's counterplay to Deadeye. I think this is something that Deadeye in particular has always struggled with, particularly with its old elite skill. It's had this... It is very uninteractive to play against, especially if you're a certain profession or certain professions. If you're something that's kind of slow um, and melee oriented, you know, if you're a necromancer or anything like that, right? You are not, go you can't, you literally can't do anything, right? Like, you have absolutely no counterplay. And this is why Deadeye is something that I, I think Arena is always going to be really, really careful about, um, just in general, is because of this slight uninteractivity that it can bring into the game. Um, so, a few little changes here just to make sure that it doesn't get completely out of hand. Then we've got Warrior. The final one, and, you know, the Warrior mains, they were probably quaking in fear with me scrolling down here. But don't worry, guys. It's actually not even that bad. In fact, these changes, they, they basically don't do anything. Uh, but, you know, like, they're numbers. Here we go. 
Blood Reaction. Increase the precision to ferocity conversion from 10 to 12% in PvE only. And Bloody Roar. Damage bonus goes from 20% to 15% in PvE only. So, what's their goal here? Well, they say it right here. They're trying to create a trade-off between the quickness build and the full DPS build. Because, of course, Blood Reaction is like the pure DPS trait that competes with the quickness trait, Heat the Soul. And Bloody Roar is just the Grand Master trait that you always take because you like to pump. These builds are literally one trait apart. Full DPS quickness and... Uh, or full DPS and quickness build, they're one trait apart. The particularly Bloody Reaction... Blood Reaction versus um, Heat the Soul. Uh, this turns out to be a pretty small DPS increase for both... Uh, decrease, rather, for both builds. Apparently, the full DPS build is losing, like, 1% DPS, and the quickness DPS build is losing, like, 3%, apparently. That's that's basically what the what the nerds have said. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, you know, there, there's a change. It's been slightly nerfed, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if you'll even really be able to tell the difference. But, you know, the idea behind it is good, right? Uh, the idea behind it definitely makes sense to me. Because um, you need to make sure that if you're going to be giving AoE quickness, there has to be a trade-off, right? You can't just be doing full DPS and also giving boons. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it, right? Like, in the, the paradigm of the game. Um, and, yeah, that's it for the balance patch notes. It's very interesting, and I, I think there's a bit of insight here um, that we can get from this. Like, if we compare the warrior change to the mirage change, in a lot of ways, they kind of... It's a similar philosophy, right? They want to just tone it down a little bit. Um, so it's not out of control. Um, but the, the the numbers are not, are not the same, right? Uh, with the Warrior, I feel like this isn't actually going to change things that much. The differentiation is not going to be crazy high, I feel like. Um, or the increase in differentiation is not going to be massively increased by this. Whereas the Mirage change is like, well, you know, it's overwhelming a little bit. But, you know, how, how about fuck you, right? Uh... <laughs> So I think there's maybe a couple of tuning issues here that might need another iteration to address some of these numbers uh, overall. But, I don't know, pretty interesting patch. Uh, nothing too major, I want to say. Uh, great stuff is fun, that's for sure. Uh, I think the magic changes for heal chrono, definitely pretty good. And I want Firebrand to be good in PvP. I think that, well, I mean, do I? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, that's cool. I actually really like this adaptive armor trait. That's really cool, uh, I think, uh, as well. That's going to be fun to play around with, I think. Uh, but, yeah. Nothing too out of the ordinary or completely insane in that regard. And yeah, of course, we still have our big old um, mid-March Omega patch. No live stream for this one. It's just a little uh, mini update. Uh, but yeah, mid-March, another Omega balance patch. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, and I mean, yeah, we should, we should stay tuned for it, I guess. We should enjoy it when it arrives. Decent patch, decent patch, if you ask me. Well, actually, I'm, I'm not even... It's just like it's... I wouldn't show if it's a decent patch. It's just, it's, you know, it's a fairly minor patch. Not a lot going on there. Guardian mains rejoice that you can radiant fire whenever you want now. We love to see that. I do hope they keep shaping relics in an interesting direction as well. And um, maybe kind of look at some of the more passive ones. I feel like the more passive ones should just be pretty much the bad relics, right? And the, the more kind of interesting wacky ones uh, are the really strong ones. Like stuff like Caracosa, for example. Stuff like Midnight King, right? Like those are the ones that I think can be really interesting. Um, and have the potential to be rather exciting. But anyway, that's it. Let me know what you thought of that. Um, we're done. Uh, more videos to come on YouTube, guys. I am on my way back. You'll have noted that I'm absent from the internet for a pretty good chunk of time. But don't worry. I'm uh, getting back into the mix. Uh, insane content is to come. You better be prepared for it. So make sure to follow, subscribe. Uh, come back and watch every single day uh, and you know watch the stream on Twitch and on YouTube as well It's gonna be great. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video enjoyed the analysis and I will I'll see you next time YouTube people. Okay, maybe I'll see you on the stream as well Ooh. Or maybe I won't maybe I'll never see you again and well Wouldn't that be spooky? I'm done. I'm out